Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of cool things that I'm into. In, in my yard, edibly speaking. Let's take a look at this. And here's something that's been on my channel quite a bit. And uh, it's a brown turkey fig. I did a fair amount of trimming on this thing this year. And that's really what I would suggest everybody do when they have a brown turkey fig tree. You can see that I made cuts, pretty substantial cuts to limit the outward growth because I want to be able to get under it. I thinned out the canopy a bit, uh, but now we're past the point of doing that and it started to fruit. This is April, the beginning of, actually, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the beginning of May, and what we see are the little figs starting to form, and these look pretty good. What you also see is a very healthy, well, it's a little yellowy, but uh, a pretty healthy leaf structure. These fig leaves are incredibly interesting to me. They're very, almost fuzzy. You can hear that. Uh, they get a beautiful you know, pattern. They are actually also um, very fragrant. You can, mm, they smell good, almost like the fruit itself. And uh, it's a deciduous tree. So these leaves, you know, this tree was bare most of the year, but now these leaves are sprouting everywhere and really coming in like gangbusters. Now since, my hope is that since I have trimmed back this tree, I will get a much greater quantity of larger fruit. In previous years, I have started to get a too much of a bumper crop of fruit which has been smaller and uh, I'd rather have fewer bigger. So that's why I trimmed it back. But look at this, for every, every single sprout that's coming out, you're getting five or six figs see here. So I'm looking at, they were probably about two weeks, three weeks away before the first figs start to come in and then they'll give figs for about, uh, I don't know, a month. And then typically they'll start to get this, this brown on the leaves as a result of sprinkler water hitting it. It kind of burns them. It's not a big deal. Uh, typically they'll start to get in my area a rust on it, kind of a black a black uh, spottiness all over the leaves and it'll slowly kind of deteriorate and it generally loses all of its leaves about halfway through the summer most of its leaves and then just kind of has uh, you know doesn't look that great now you can treat that there are different different types of uh, I think copper oxides and things like that I mean I've never used them so I don't really know but I know there are ways to treat the fungus the kind of black dot fungus that gets on the leaves here as far as I'm concerned, it's never hurt this tree. This tree is about 15 years old, and I've gotten a bumper crop of figs from it every single year. So I don't see any need to treat it. It's still very healthy. Now, the little bit of yellowness that I can see on some of the leaves, and you can certainly hear, see here, you know, that's, that's indicative of a little bit of a nutrient deficiency, of course. And I think this, this browning on the edge is definitely a result of the... Of the uh, sprinklers hitting it we have a lot of salty irrigation so it kind of whacks it you see down here you got that same idea some of these sucker shoots that are coming up also showing a little bit injury but not too bad it's a very vigorous tree you know the fig is a relative of the ficus some people call it the ficus I don't like it's regular ficus trees their ficus trees are great when you plant them in a pot and they're contained but when you plant one in Florida in the ground uh, it just goes off the deep end. The roots come out of the dirt. They can crack sewer pipes. It's incredibly vigorous and very hard to deal with tree once it starts, it gets going. But you can also use that vigor to your advantage. And you might wonder, why am I letting it get all of these, grow all of these suckers around the base? Well, I'm doing that intentionally. And uh, if you look at this one, that's even, that's, this is a great thing. This little sucker growing off the root base of this thing is growing into the ground here. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to mess with it too much, but underneath there, there's going to be roots. And what I'll do is, uh, in a couple of weeks, probably after it starts fruiting, I'll go and, and take cuttings beneath the soil and bring up the roots and I'll pot the, the cuttings. And you can see there's plenty of them. And the ones that have this nice woody gro growth actually are, have a great chance. This one's not going to obviously do anything. I just need to get rid of that. I actually use that little knot there. My kids use it to uh, step up into the tree, so I keep that one there. But um, these little sprouts here, they are looking very, very good. 
that goes right into the dirt there. So does this one. These are all prime cutting. So as soon as I got the grass going, I just did a big, big weeding of the grass. Look at that. Yeah, free grass plugs. I like it. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna have some prime cuttings here. I'll tell you what. I'm stoked about that. Oops. Yeah, it's funny. You wouldn't think a fig tree could be a great climbing tree, but for a six-year-old and a 12-year-old, it's actually pretty good. I've hollowed out the middle area here so that they can climb up. It's very smooth. They climb it in bare feet, and they can just kind of get right up into the middle of it and pick fruit when it starts coming in, so that's fun. Put a, what we call a swinging rope on it. They can swing back and forth. So it's super fun, but uh, yeah, the fig tree, man, it's exciting. It's super exciting to me <laughs> that I have an incredible fruit harvest just around the corner and uh, these these figs the brown turkey figs at least they taste kind of like a brown sugar taste they're just deliciously sweet and uh, the inside is like a pink to purplish inside the outside gets real uh, dark brown to purple color on the outside I'll make some more videos once they start coming in but they sure are on the way and uh, one other thing I just point out about, and I've made this in a lot of the videos that I've done, look at the structure of this tree, right? It comes up, I've let some of the lateral branches grow, and I keep all the leaves trimmed down from here so you can get under it. Then I have this area. That area is the fruit zone. Above that area is the death zone, where you have 220 volts of electricity. Now it's deceiving in this video, I'm sure it looks like it's right up on it, it's actually about I don't know, eight feet behind it, but you know, it's close enough that we don't want to be anywhere near power lines. We don't want to have anybody thinking they're going to put a ladder up there or do anything. Keep it down low. Now this is more than enough fruit, but when you look at it, it's almost all just with an easy picking range. And that's what I want. Now this is a tree that's going to absolutely be easy to pick. We're going to fill up many bowls full of figs and uh, I might even try to make fig preserves if you've got any ideas if you've got any ideas on how to make fig preserves I would definitely be open to them and uh, hey if you like these kinds of videos then don't hesitate to uh, subscribe because then you'll be notified as new ones come out and uh, if you like it don't forget to check the click the thumbs up hey thanks for watching